Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I'm your host Scrap the Cast. For today's video, we're gonna go ahead and find out how much copper is inside five pounds of insulated wire. Now we've got some various cords here, uh, part of an extension cord, uh, a couple lamp cords, two vacuum cords, and some other various cords that I had cut off of appliances in my everyday travels. You can clearly see here, it's five pounds. Uh, so we'll go ahead and cut the plug ends off we're gonna go ahead and use the stripping machine here just so we can get a quick job done of this. And then once we get all the copper extracted from the wire, we're gonna go ahead and melt it down and make a nice fine ingot like the ones that we have here. And just as a side note, we've got 126 and a half pounds as of right now. So I'm curious as to how much copper we're gonna get off of this wire. So we'll go ahead and get the camera set up and we'll bring it back. Okay guys, we got the uh, wire processed down. We cut all the plug ends off. Um, these right here, I do save them. There is a little bit of copper left inside them and some brass. Uh, my scrapyard does buy these. They don't pay very much for them, but it's more than a steel price. So I do save those. So we'll go ahead and cut the, uh, we'll get these brass plugs off and we'll get the little bit of copper that's left inside them and uh, we'll bring it back. And just as a side note, I just want you guys to know that a lot of guys will boil these to make them softer. You don't need to do that. All you got to do is get a pair of channel locks, put the plug in here like this, and just put a firm grip on it, and then just take a pair of side cutters. You know, you need something with an, uh, a nice little cutting edge on it. Just grab onto it and then twist it like this. It'll pull it out completely. These guys waste a lot of time boiling these and then it gets messy and it's, you know, they're very soft and the plastic is garbage. I mean, you can see how quickly I could do these here. So, I mean, there's no reason to go ahead and go to that extra trouble for no reason. So, you can see, just pulls right out. Very easy. You'll find on my channel, I do the simplest method possible with as little work. Let's weigh up the brass real quick. All right, we're in kilograms, but we'll be able to tell what the grams are. So just from these cord ends here, this pile of brass, we got 46 grams of brass. Uh, that's almost one and a half ounces. Actually, I believe it is one and a half ounces. 1.7 ounces. So it's worth it. It literally took me an, an extra minute or two to do that. Totally worth it. Save it, put it in a jar, and then sell it as is afterwards or melt it down like I do. So we're good. So throw this in the brass jar. And there we go. Brass jar's looking pretty good. This probably won't even register on the scale just because it's so light, but we'll check anyways. And just from the cord ends, what we rescued, 0.1 ounces, uh, five grams, four grams. So that's about a little over the weight of a copper penny. So whatever. I mean, it's still extra copper. I'll set that aside right there. So now we'll go ahead and bring this over to the stripping machine. We're going to do it by smallest gauge to largest gauge. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do the larger gauge first because there is three wires inside here that end up being about this size once you get it stripped out. And then the same for the vacuum cord, there's only two wires in here. You can see them sticking off right here. So we'll go ahead and strip these down first and then we'll go ahead and do the rest of it. All right, so here's the guide right here. Go ahead and uh, adjust it to the right size. That should be good to start off. Normally what I do is I clip a little section off and then I feed it through. And then once I see that it's at the correct depth, then I'll feed the whole thing through. But we'll just go ahead and feed this through as is and see how we do. There is a guide that belongs on the front here. I decided to take it off because I find it gets more in the way than anything. 
And I usually put downward pressure on it so it doesn't try to spin off the wheel and come up here and not score it. But this machine does 60 feet per minute. Well worth the money, especially if you have long cords or if you have spools of wire. And you can see that it actually scores it right down the middle. Sometimes when you go too deep, it actually cuts into the wire here, which is all right. So, and you can see, just peel it right off. There we go. Now, one thing I will say, oh, I missed a small section of it, which is all right. No, it's not because I can't get my fingers in there. So we'll start it from this section here and we'll pull it through the other side. There we go. And that's it. So there's the plastic. Uh, this is twisted. I have not really figured out a good way of untwisting these other than just attaching it to something like this. And one thing that I tried doing, I don't, I'm not always successful. Let's see if we can do it on camera here. I use my drill, I stretch it out, and I attach two of the wires inside the chuck. So we'll start with the, uh, the white wire. All right, and what we're doing is, see if we got this right. So when you hold one end, let's see if we can do this. See now how it's starting to come off? And you can see, now it bunches right up and you can easily pull it off. So let's see, we'll undo this. And you can see now how they're straight. So that's a quick way of actually untangling the wire. So you just pretty much go like this. Just feed one of them out and then the other ones are fine. See how easy that was? Very easy. Try to do the easiest job that you can. And this is the easiest way that I found to do it. So now we're all set. We've got all three pretty much stripped apart from each other. And we could go ahead and strip these down afterwards. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the other, strip down the longer vacuum cables or vacuum wires. And then all the gauges are pretty much similar. There might be 14 gauge and then a couple 12 gauges. So you can adjust the depth on there. And I try to keep them separated as I do it. But you can clearly see now, you would have had to literally unwrap each one individually. And the way that I did it with the drill is actually the easiest way to do it. So there you go. That is money making, saving tips right there at its finest. So we'll go ahead and get the rest of this uh, stripped down on the machine and we'll bring it back uh, when we're all set. Showed you how to strip three wires or untwist three wires easily. Here's how you do two. What I normally do is I grab onto one wire. We're gonna do the white one here. So the black one is the one we wanna get off. So I pretty much just keep going like this. Just hold it and then just keep pulling on the white wire. It probably will get tangled eventually but you can see it's starting to bunch up. It's twisting the wire as it's doing it. And once you get it through, like this is gonna hang up here because of this white crap. This stuff is impossible to get off. You have to untangle it like you normally would. Now I'm getting all tangled up. So we'll get that out of there. But if you keep going, pull that white wire through. The white wire is in good shape. This one's all twisted like a phone cable. Just go like this, straighten it out a little bit. It'll naturally wanna untwist itself. Make sure you wear gloves when you do this because you will burn yourself, almost like a rope burn. And here we go. Now once I put it in the stripping machine, these little bends and twists, it won't matter. It's gonna straighten it out. And one thing I do wanna say that I have not found an easy way of doing, when you have a vacuum cord, it usually has this like insulation, it's almost like a rope. It's twisted around. I have not found an easy way to get this off. So normally I just keep untwisting it like this and then when it gets long enough I cut it off in sections so that's the way I do it I'm not sure of an easier way to do it as of yet but I'm always open to suggestions so if you guys know of an easier way please let me know and let all the other viewers know so that's one vacuum cord already done <clears throat> excuse me so I got this left and then I got another vacuum cord over there. So we'll go ahead and finish up and then uh, we'll get a weigh in before we melt it and then we'll melt it down and we'll get a final weigh in after that. Prep the end. I think it was a uh, 16 gauge. There we go. So now we're all set. 
just twist it and then run it through. So this is 25 feet. So this would take almost about 30 seconds to strip completely. But you can see it moving. I know this is boring, guys. I apologize. But I just wanted to show you real time how long it really takes to run the machine and how long it takes to actually feed the wire through. I mean, peeling it apart is the easy part. This is the easy part, too. It's just actually getting it untwisted is what is the hard part. So we've already got about 15 feet done now. Roughly, this might have been a 30 foot cord, honestly. I'm not really sure, I didn't uh, measure it out completely. Actually, I didn't measure it at all. But you can see where it's twisting and the machine is actually straightening itself out. So that's why I said, you know, when you pull them apart, the way I showed you on the two pieces, uh, don't worry about it all being twisted up like that because the machine will actually straighten itself out unless you're doing it manually with a razor knife. So now we find the original end. That was the end that we just did. Grab all of it. We got both ends here. So here we go. This is the same gauge as the other one. You see the gate, the depth might have been off a little bit. You can see some of the frayed wires. Just grab onto them as you see them. And then it'll still come off in one section. Like that just broke off, but that's okay. But you can see how easy it is. Very easy to use this. And that's why I save all my wire. I strip everything. I don't let any wire go to the scrap yard unless it's very thin wire, which I do give to the scrap yard. But this stuff here, especially the long sections, I definitely strip it down. So now you might run into a problem where it starts tangling itself up, but that's okay. There you go. There's no quicker way than doing this than the way I'm showing you. Unless you've got some kind of industrial machine where it does it very quickly but you know for the money i spent on that machine which was around 200 dollars um i've already paid for the machine this year just in stripped wire there might be a little end that gets stuck but like i said that's about 25 to 30 feet that i just did in under about a minute and a half so there we go we'll add that to the pile so we'll go ahead and strip the rest of this stuff down and we'll go ahead and get away up all right guys all the wire is stripped Here's the pile of copper. That's a nice pile right there. Pretty heavy too. So let's go ahead and weigh it up. Just try to bunch it up a little bit so it all fits on the scale. That's five grams there, we've already established. We'll just throw it on the pile too. So let's see how much we got. Five pounds of insulated wire yielded us let's see 720 grams well 725 grams technically 25 and a half ounces uh yep <laughs> one pound 9.6 ounces so yeah that's about uh roughly 36 37 percent yield which is pretty much what I was expecting. Not too shabby. So we'll go ahead and melt this down and we'll make a nice little ingot out of it. Safety first, always cover the hose. Sometimes there will be like embers that come off from the top so you don't wanna catch a fire, burn the hose. The cardboard is to prevent the crucible from sticking to the fire brick. So we'll stick the cardboard in there Get the crucible set up the way we want it. Okay. Always have protective leather gloves. Propane's already on. You hear it going? See if it's gonna get it on the first time. There we go. And then we get the airflow. That's what it looks like. for airflow. Should take about 15 minutes to melt down, might be a little bit better. Um, I might run out of propane. If I do, then I'll go to the hardware store, get another tank and we'll hook it up and then we'll continue. Okay guys, we're almost all set. 
the copper pretty much is melted. Uh, I'm just gonna give it about another minute. I'm not gonna add any borax. Uh, the copper is pretty much pure to begin with, or close to it. I didn't have any foreign materials still attached to the copper wire. I didn't have any plastic or anything like that. So I'm pretty comfortable that we might lose a couple of grams, maybe 30 grams tops. That usually seems to be the average when I melt this amount. But, you know, we'll see what happens. But like I said, I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes. I'm gonna preheat the mold. Always preheat your mold and always preheat your tongs. You don't wanna have any kind of a steam explosion. And uh, always make sure your shoes are tied. Cause uh, last thing you wanna do is trip over your feet while you're pouring 2,000 degree molten metal. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll keep recording here. Go ahead and preheat this mold. And I got the other camera set up to kind of do a close up. I don't know if the angle's good because there's really no LCD screen on here. So hopefully there will be a good pour. And I want to give you guys a first person view as to what I'm looking at when I do this. So we're just going to remove all the condensation that's built up in the graphite. And there we go. So we'll set this aside. It's very hot in here. So that's preheated. We're just gonna preheat the tongs for a split second, a couple seconds, just enough to warm it up and get any condensation off of it, which there really shouldn't be any, but you never know. So you always wanna be, you know, prepared. So that should be good. The copper is pretty much boiling in there. I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. Gonna stick it in there just like that yet yeah, now we'll get ready to stir it yeah there might be a little impurities not much that's actually the borax that's still on the crucible from what i seasoned it you can actually see that's borax right there you can see it's like a glassy glassy tint to it or glassy feel when that actually solidifies i'll be able to smash it on there it'll shatter like glass so you can see the copper moving around now that's usually a telltale sign that it's ready And we are running out of propane, so couldn't come at a better time. Let's just get this camera set up. And we'll start recording now. A little bit of uh, the furnace still touched attached to it. I have to recoat the furnace. Get that off of the All right. Now we're ready. And that's all there is to it. Wasn't the best pour. I did a little too quickly. Stick that in there. There's a tiny drop left in there. So that's solidified already. So then we'll go ahead and remove it. And there we go. I don't usually let them cool too much in the crucible because you're only supposed to get about 30 uses out of this. I've already got 30 uses and it's still in really good shape because I extract the bar very quickly. I just wait till it solidifies and then extract it. So we'll shut this camera off. That's a GoPro first generation. So we're gonna go ahead and quench the bar now. There is a little hole in it. Usually there's holes in them. Copper is very difficult to cast and get perfect. So here we go. And it always turns black. I don't know why, but it turns black every single time. So that's it. 
I don't know if you can see that, but the water is starting to evaporate off of it because it's still piping hot. But I could grab this with my hand like this, put the glove on. Actually, that wasn't a bad looking pour. I like the design on that. So let's clean it up. I usually start with the edges first. All right, guys, the bar's all cleaned up. We had one pound, 9.6 ounces uh, after stripping the wire. Let's see what we ended up with. One pound, 9.7 ounces. So that means there might've been a drop of copper left in the uh, crucible from the last melt. So we didn't lose anything pretty much off of that stripped wire, which I anticipated we weren't gonna lose anything or much at all. So let's go ahead and add this to the stack. There we go, stack's looking pretty good. Thank you very much for watching my video. If this is the kind of stuff that interests you and uh, this is the first time you viewed anything from my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, be sure to hit that bell notification. And you'll be alerted next time I post a new YouTube video. That's pretty much what you can expect from my channel. Uh, scrapping things down, taking the copper, melting it down, and then adding to the stack. So thank you very much for watching and uh, happy scrapping casting and stacking.